Hi everybody, Peter of England. Today I'm going to cover what I covered two videos ago on the technique that is, I think, exclusive to Weirbank and the suggestion to all of you out there who have um, bills to pay, um, whether that is uh, council taxes, state taxes, federal taxes, court fines, um, traffic uh, offence fines, um, whether it is um, HMRC in the UK or uh, IRS in the United States, um, or whether it is for mortgages when you are in arrears and credit card payments. What I'd like to stress above all else is that many of you who are new to the idea of Weirbank um, may not have watched the videos from 10 years ago, and I can't expect you maybe to have done that, but the entire rationale and ideal, ideology of Weirbank's function was predicated on not uh, involving itself to promote further consumerism, but in fact just to eradicate or neutralize debt. So that's what Weir Bank is about, neutralizing debt. So what does that mean? If you are looking to pay off, um, let's say, a mortgage, what you would be looking to do is pay off the entire amount, not to pay off a monthly uh, contribution or um, uh, say a, a pure monthly arrears. Same with a credit card. It's not for you to clear the balance down with a promissory note, we a bank check or other instrument and then expect the company that you are uh, sending it to to allow you to carry on uh, racking up more consumer-based debt on the back of that. So I hope that's clear. This is um, a way out. This is an opportunity for all of you out there that are um, financially up against the wall, so to speak. It is usually a, um, a resource of last resort. It's not for people who want to just play around with it to see if it works. It's for people who are on desperate situations that need something to give them some credibility and remain in honor to try and pay their way out of a certain situation. That having been said, when I recently, I think it was about two weeks ago, put the video out concerning the bills of exchange and backing it with a promissory note in a particular way, Quite a few uh, questions have arisen. Now, for all of those out there that haven't taken advantage of the, uh, the online purchase, which is actually uh, go to wearebank.co.uk, go to the tab Bills of Exchange, and that will lead you to the, the, um, the area for the, the Bills of Exchange and Promissory Note pack. Um, for those who haven't had the, the pleasure of reading that 80-page tome, which explains in great detail um, how the promissory note is used with a bill of exchange, what I'm going to do today is over the next five, or maybe it will run to 10 minutes, run you through the ideology why this is different. Now, it's coming up to that festive period of the year, to the year's end, where everybody is going to be running up more debt on their card, getting into difficulties with like, do I pay the mortgage or do I put food on the table? The answer to that is I would suggest you seriously consider either a loan or working with a small group. Um, everybody knows another person who's in debt um, and has got a complaint against the system. So I would suggest strongly that you combine together in a small working group. It could be two of you, it could be four of you. You could share the, um, the ideas and you can share the expense. And so with that in mind, that's what I would suggest because as, in, in to, as we roll over into 2025, I assure you things are financially going to get more and more difficult. Um, and that's predicated on the fact that the, um, the international stock markets are just climbing up almost an exponential curve now. And uh, my advice would be for anyone that's in the crypto world to take whatever um, profits you've made 
and get out because one of my coming videos soon will be showing you the expose on that, why it's all going to go south quite soon. Having said that, what I'd like to now do is uh, uh, turn your attention to these two documents which I've got posted up here. This is a promissory note. It's similar to a check, but is not a check. A promissory note is what it says, a notice from one individual to another with a date, a signature, a definite amount for a, uh, a, a payment, an agreed payment, a promise to pay. What I've shown you here is the original Weir Bank promissory note, which backed all of the checking facilities that Weir Bank offered in 2015. And as you can see, 10 year maturity date on the promissory note. So for all those people who were members of Weir Bank and maybe dropped away for some reason, for all those people, the shills and the trolls out there that thought, well, this is a con, this is a fraud, it's not going to work, Peter of England's going to be arrested any minute now. Well, have we got news for you. We're coming up to the 10th um, anniversary, which will be in March 2025, and I assure you that all of these instruments, these financial instruments, these commercial pieces of paper, are valid and that they do work <clears throat> And the only time that they don't work is when people fold immediately with the inevitable pushback from these uh, administrative, um, low-level um, serfs that are the protectionist mechanisms for the international bankers and the financial instruments that they have backing all of this here. So what we've got to notice here on the promissory note generally is that it's a promise from a named person who signs it and dates it to another organization to pay an amount. It can be on a fixed period. This one is a 10 year maturity date from the time it was actually created. So when that comes to April, 2025 in this case, then that maturity date is then what's called uh, fulfilled and it is then callable. You can call it in. Um, why it's different from a bill of exchange and why this uh, technique that I've suggested to all of you out there to use to start paying your bills uh, or debts is that through into early 2025, what I am going to start to show you is the, the financial kudos, the financial credibility that is you in this world of finance. It's all to do with the fiat system. It is all to do with the value that you possess from the time that you are born, which is backed by a birth certificate and then followed up at the age of 16 when most of you will be getting what's called a social security number or a national insurance uh, number, introducing you into the, into the club. And that's the club you stay in until they beat you finally over the head with it uh, when you're about 75 or 85 when you die. So that's what we're going to be looking at to show you how to call on those funds. Uh, people call them global trust accounts. People call them uh, sovereign accounts. All sorts of names uh, are, 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 uh, are presented with that. But the bottom line to express to you is that does exist. Those black screen accounts do exist and they are of immense value. So what we're needing to do is to try and show you how to access it. And this in part shows you how to do it because the big, big thing that is the elephant in the room, the thing that all the legal bods try and denigrate, that is something called the signature. Without it, your credit card agreements, your bank agreements, your car loans, everything that you possess and live in and uh, take account of is worthless unless you've signed for it. 
but what you're signing for is a prepaid account. Okay, that is the clue. Now, what we have here, therefore, is referring to how are you going to pay for these, these, um, these uh, debts that are drowning you um, and your family. So, first of all, this is, as I say, a Weirbank promissory note. I haven't put the original one up that is done uh, with this pack for various reasons, because I've changed it a little and I want to keep that... Um, uh, keep that as a uh, uh, something that we discuss either in a webinar or, or as it's associated with this. It's a hybrid. So the promissory note is something you fill in with a promise to pay the payee. The payee is the one that the money is going to go to. The difference with that then is with the technique that I'm showing you now with the bills of exchange and a promissory note combined, what we've got to realize is that on a bill of exchange, we've got a drawer, a drawery, and a payee. Usually it is a three-party um, transactional instrument. Now, what we have done, or what I am trying to show you, is a magic here, whereby the, we, we, in effect, turn the tables on the payee. So the payee, let's say, in this instance, would be a utilities company. Usually, the utilities company would be the one that drew up the bill. But in our particular case, because you are the one who is going to be making the payment, you are drawing up the bill. So you become not only the drawer, but you become the drawee. So you become a combined position. The payee is the utility company, the court, um, HMRC, IRS, whoever the debt obligation or the contract that you are uh, being obliged to pay on is in existence, that is the payee. But we've switched it slightly because the drawer controls the bill. Okay? Now, in addition to that, what you will see on here is that there are certain... Uh, differences between a promissory note or a check and a bill of exchange. And the biggest single one is that it is a standalone, separate financial obligation than the contract that you have made with, let's say, your utilities provider or the the socially implied contract via the, um, the, uh, the local council or uh, your, uh, your, your state tax bureau. Um, those operate in a slightly different manner. But with this, when you create a bill of exchange, it is something outside the parameters of any contractual obligation. So when you create this, you're creating something that in a way they have you double on. So, for example, let's say you own the utilities company, 1,500 units, could be dollars, it could be pounds or euros. They will eventually be coming after you for that amount, okay? Now, if that is the case, the way you subvert that or divert that is by putting together a bill of exchange presenting it to them for acceptance. And with the bill of exchange, you can, as we've mentioned last time, you can have it either as what's called a term bill or an on-site bill. And so you put in here a number of days after which the maturity of the bill of exchange will be callable on, and therefore that utility company can then claim the payment. Okay? So that's what we've done here. Now, what happens is that when you tender this bills of exchange, and I've got part, uh, uh, just to let you know, it says one of two here, and that is two of two. 
what we've got here is just, whoops, uh, what we've got here is just the, the reverse of it. That's just so you can generally see. That's the reverse. So on the back of the bill of exchange are the terms of the payment and usually a series of um, bars for what's called endorsements. And so with a bill of exchange, before the maturity date, the utility company can sign or a financial officer of the company can sign that and pass it on and get the credit for the face value of that bill of exchange. Then whoever is the first, uh, sorry, so the utility company would be endorse E number one. The next one would be able to endorse and pass on again and again and again and again until down the line, eventually someone, when it gets to say the end of the term, 90 days or 120, should we say, they then come along and present the bill for payment. But that doesn't concern you at this point because the promise to pay on here means that when you tender this, if it is what's called um, good on its face, that means if everything looks good on the face, there is an obligation by the so-called payee, uh, or usually it would be the drawery, to accept it, okay? Because it's valued as money. And there are various degrees of money. One would be um, legal tender, which would probably come in at number one. But number two or three is a bill of exchange because it is an absolute age-old instrument regulated by uh, UNCITRAL, that's the United Nations Convention on International, uh, International Convention, United Nations Convention on International Trade, Promissory Notes and Bills of Exchange. Um, you've also got Section 97 of the Bills of Exchange Act 1882, and um, uh, UCC, Uniform Commercial Code in the United States, Section 1, 103. They all operate for the terms of trade and commerce under what's called the law merchant. And that is what's called Lex Mercatoria. And to violate that is one of the, the most uh, profane things anyone could do. So. If the payee is refusing the bill of exchange, they've got to have very, very good reason. They can't just refuse it because they think they don't like the color of the paper or they don't want to work like that. Because um, Lex Mercatoria, the trade between merchants, is um, older than any of the bylaws and the, 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 um, the flavors of the month that the corporatocracy decide they want to wheel out to you. So that's a very, very important point that once that hits them, they have to sign it and get it back to you. If they refuse to sign the bill, then under the Bills of Exchange Act, to the extent of that obligation financially that you had, then you are no longer obligated. Or at a first instance, let's say they decide to take you to court, they've got to have very, very good reasons why they refused the bill. What doubles down on them, though, and which they don't expect, unless they're listening to this, of course, is the very fact that you have a promissory note in the background, which is the promise to pay and the promissory note and the bill of exchange are created at the same time, okay? They have the same date of issue and they have the same maturity date. So, lo and behold, if the so-called creditor decides to take legal action against you, and whether that's Marston's in the UK or whether it's in the United States or Australia, any other um, 
debt ambulance chasing no good son of a bitch legal firm passing themselves off as doing us all a societal favor come charging after you there are two things you've got you've got proof that the bill of exchange was refused without any grounds and next you've got the promissory note the good thing here, though, is with the bill of exchange, what we've actually engineered in here to give you extra, extra belt and braces protection is that if this bill of exchange would be refused for any reason, then we've placed on what's called um, a referee in case of need and a payer for honor. Two additional parties named on here, which is all explained in the, uh, the manual as to how you do that. But in effect, what that does is it gives a referee who the Peggy can get in touch with and say, okay, how can we resolve this? And over and above all that, there is another individual named on it who will step forward and volunteer as the, pay, uh, as the payer. Okay, so that is the doubling down of it. The third requirement uh, on this is that the bill is payable at the merchant's address. Very important. That's one of the big ones because typically if you were uh, a seller of cloth or a seller of wine, you would sell that to the, the buyer. Uh, when it was time for the payment to be made, then the buyer would come to you to make delivery of the payment. Okay, very important point. So what we're doing is also splintering the traditionally accepted view that that large corporation in Slough or Chicago or Adelaide, wherever they are, or Ottawa, uh, needs the money sending to them by bank transfer, by whatever means they think they can con cajole you into making that payment on the back of this weaponization of money, which is the precursor to digital currency or central bank digital currency. So hopefully I've explained as much of that as, as doesn't overly labor and tax the main thing here you need to start looking at, though, as well, is the value of the signature. And I can assure you, uh, contrary probably to what people like David Icke say in his book, The Biggest Secret, that's probably the biggest financial secret on the planet that everything can be signed for when you are playing in the realm of the straw man persona that is on the public side since 1931 in the UK, 1933 with Roosevelt's confiscation, Gold Confiscation Act, and worldwide since 1945, when the entire world was dragged kicking and screaming from the private side into the public side. And the public side being the big public, all capitals, death, numerals on your tombstone meant that credit had to be provided. Those were the terms of the agreement, the secret agreement of Bretton Woods, 1944, and the bankers who stole the wealth of the world cajoled and promised and guaranteed the heads of state or the sovereigns that were in, in charge that credit would be made available. And that credit's based on that. That's the secret agreement. And this knowledge is being poured out to you now with more to come, I assure you, over the next coming few weeks by um, agencies and groups who are pro-human and pro-maintaining the the, the right for you to choose your own futures. Anyway, please go to wearebank.co.uk, look at the tab at the top, bills of exchange, and do yourself and your neighbors and any group you're involved with a favor. Okay, thank you.